I'm adding one more thing to my New Year's resolutions for 2019, and that is sometimes it's okay to uh, accept something that's not accurate, as, as long as it's socially okay to do so. I sometimes get into arguments with people because something I know is right and I insist on it, and um, when, you know, sometimes it's better to be socially correct than to be uh, scientifically correct. So let me give you some examples. Uh, when I was in fifth grade, I was playing chess with a classmate when we got into an argument because I was winning and uh, I, I, you know, um, he and I were um, pretty good in chess. But he insisted that, uh, see, I, we, I knew about the 50 move rule, he, um, and he insisted it was 20 moves, and we had a little d argument over that, and the whole class kind of sided with him. Even the people who knew the rule sided with him, because, you know, I was pretty good at chess, and they wanted to see the underdog kind of win for once, you know, and I, I got into, I got very upset over it, and I became very loud and obnoxious, and in a sense, I lost in that regard, because I was loud and obnoxious, and, you know, nobody wanted to play with me after that. And uh, it made me realize that sometimes, you know, I should have just shaken his hand and, you know, hey, hey congratulations, you did pretty good on this game. But instead, I wanted to be correct. Um, sometimes I love some of the things I'm involved in, whether it be science, whether it be uh, playing chess competitively, that I, I get very obnoxious when things aren't correct. You know, if I lose, you know, st straight, you know, I, I, I might not be so upset, but when people have inaccuracies like that, it, it just bothers me because I, I love these things. Um, and, um, okay, so when I was going to school, uh, I got into an argument with a classmate over a chemistry misconception. So what had happened was, um, well, the, the whole thing started because I was dating a girl who was spending all of my money, and I wasn't eating very well, and I got sick. I was eating fish out of Lake Ontario, and I got very ill. I lost a lot of weight, and I got eczema all over my body, and um, I came to discover that I had eaten, uh, I had uh, overdosed on mercury. And uh, I was talking to my classmate about this, and we got into a little small talk about chemistry. And um, he thought the, 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 the chemical symbol for mercury was MU, and I knew it was HG. And we went back and forth about it, and uh, I was like, you want to look it up? And so we got onto the computer and typed it into Google, and sure enough, it's HG. And he got so upset about it. And uh, at the time, you know, I, I, I was a little bit... Um, a little young and naive at the time, I took a pencil and I scribbled on my desk in really big letters, HG! And, uh, you know, it, it, I should have let him have it his way, you know, so what if he wants to claim it's MU? Well, in any case, I started eating better and I felt better. I never really took anything to detoxify from mercury at the time, but a couple years later I went to get my blood tested for something unrelated and, um... I came to discover I was still pretty toxic in mercury, and so I started taking a drug called alpha lipoic acid to get rid of it, and um, I've done pretty well since then. Um, I had another situation where I argued with a coin dealer. Uh, he, he and I um, both like to study about uh, what happened with the Hunt brothers in 1980, so the Hunt brothers drove up the price of silver in the, in the 70s, and it culminated with them taking out huge margin loans to try to buy all of the world's silver, and um, the government changed the rules of, along the way, and, and they, they, they got bankrupted as a result of that. And the coin dealer and I um, had a... I wasn't alive when all this was happening, obviously. This was 1980. But the coin dealer was, and he said he remembered that he had a... Um, he had a friend who um, committed suicide over this uh, because uh, he had lost his life savings. He was like 70 years old, nearing retirement, when he lost his life savings. And uh, But the, the coin dealer that I was talking to about this uh, insisted that silver dropped from $50 to $3 overnight. I knew that wasn't the case. You know, I've, I've read news stories about it. I've studied it extensively. and um, But he insisted that was the case. And so we argued about that, and then I said, want to look it up? And we looked it up, and it said silver went from 50 to, I think it was 
there was one day where it was called Silver Thursday, if I remember correctly, where it dropped like 50%, but nothing as dramatic as dropping from $50 to $3. Oh, yeah, and the coin dealer misremembered it. He said that the day Reagan was inaugurated um, and um, the Iran hostages were released, Silver crashed. Uh, this was... Uh, uh, the, uh, the Silver Thursday was months before that, but he misremembered it, probably because of all the excitement about the Iran hostages. Uh, I think he liked Reagan. But whatever the case is, um, you know, it's sad enough that he had a friend who committed suicide over it, and now I'm arguing with him over minute details like this. I should have just let him have it. You know, I'm sorry for your friend, you know, and be done with it. But I, I, I just wanted to, I just love science so much, and, and politics so much that I just wanted to correct the record you know I'm not really scoring anything out of it we're not on a game show or anything I just got carried away well I had another situation more recently I'm writing some computer games and um, I was at a computer game conference where um, one of my opponents and I got into an argument over a computer optimization I knew wouldn't work but, uh, or rather, I knew that the compiler would handle it for you. You didn't have to do it explicitly. You know, I knew the code could be a whole lot cleaner, but my opponent didn't know that, and we got into a back-and-forth argument, and, and I, I had to demonstrate it to him with a, uh, with some code, and, and even then he said, well, you have a different compiler, and we argued a little bit over that. I should have let him have it, whatever his, you know, I know it, you know, and I could just do it myself, and, you know, I didn't have to argue with him about it. I don't know why I did that I think it's more important to connect with people and accept some of these things especially if the, the people involved don't want to learn something new you know maybe just accept it a little bit so um, it's a trade-off you have to make obviously obviously if, if the people have a misunderstanding and they're doing something dangerous you know then maybe you might have an obligation to correct the record. You know, if you have a friend who's eating fish out of Lake Ontario and, and thinking it's safe, you know, th that might be a different story. But if somebody just wants to misbelieve uh, how, how computer programs work or the rules of chess, you know, maybe you should just shake their hand and accept it and, and just accept that, you know, people have different, uh, uh, different ideas of how these things should work. Thanks for watching.